So the knee cut is one of the most common passes in jiu-jitsu and it's so versatile and easy to hit from so many different positions, but there's a lot of different ways to set it up. A lot of people think of it like there's one way to do the pass, but in reality, there's multiple variations for different situations. So I'm gonna go through some of the core ways I like to set it up and the core mechanics of finishing it. So the first thing to understand is that the basic idea of it is that I'm always gonna be pinning his lower body to face me and I'm gonna be rotating his upper body with some different way to put his shoulder blades flat to the floor and eventually finish chest to chest. Now, the reality is there's a lot of different ways I'm gonna do this, and there's a lot of different ways to turn him. Sometimes I'll be turning him by pulling his arm up as that rotates him this way. Uh, sometimes it might be like my head pressure and his chin turning him. Uh, it can be like a forearm pressure on the face. It could be like an underhook and like using my chest. It could be a cross face but there's always gonna be some mechanism rotating our opponent to the center. And then my bottom uh, portion, I'm gonna be either dropping my shin on his thigh or sometimes shooting all the way up. But I'm always gonna be trapping this leg in between mine and rotating my upper body to try to flatten him towards the center. So now I'm gonna go into uh, some of my favorite ways to set up against really common positions and the main details you need to know. So the first setup we're gonna do is from our opponent on his back with just his legs up like this. So if he's dead center, it can be really hard to do the cut. So what I'm gonna do is move to the side and push his leg down a bit. I wanna get his leg down enough that I can drop my shin here like this to pin this to the floor. But what I wanna do at the same time is try to, if I can, get inside of this knee space and frame my right hand to his shoulder or chest and I land here. Once I pin this leg to the floor, it's very hard for him to turn back the other way. And I wanna make sure, see a lot of people make the mistake of having their body this way. It's very easy for him to push me out. I wanna go in with my upper body. Remember, your objective is to always put his shoulder blades flat to the floor. So as I come in here, he'll start framing, so start framing. See, I have his bottom half pinned. Usually when he frames, I'm either gonna grab the elbow or the sleeve is my favorite if I can, because sometimes when you grab the elbow, he can keep pushing. When you get the sleeve, you can take this away and now now I slide through and I'm gonna use my chest weight to finish the pass. If he turns away, I'll kind of drop my chest on the near side so he can't turn away. If he turns into me, I, I drive forward with my chest and I adapt until I can finish the pass. So sometimes when I do this, as you enter, he may be able to get a little bit of a knee shield in, but that's fine. As long as I can pin the bottom leg with my shin and get my right hand high, I'll catch his sleeve when I land, so you can shield a little, and I'll land here. But as long as I have this sleeve and I have his shoulder blades flat, so you start pushing with your knee, it's very hard for him to push this out if I'm deep enough in. And what I'll do is I just keep controlling the sleeve until I work my way around, and now I can come back into a knee on belly finish or straight into side. So one more time, I'll just turn this way a little bit. So one more time, I'm here. I, if he's too shielded, then I may have to do a different pass. But if it's a little bit, I can land here like this and I get really high here. So now I push this with a shield, right? And even if I need to, I can go out, move in and finish the pass. So another common way to set this up from no grips is I'll have this top leg control in my hand, which gives me threats of toriandos and things. And as I enter, I'm gonna do the same thing, dropping my shin here, and I'm gonna try to catch his lapel or his arm if he frames me. So as I land, I catch here, and now he starts pushing with that shield, but that'll open the space up. Go back. Sometimes he can keep it here a little bit, and that's fine, I take my time, but see, I can start pushing this out of the way. Once I push this out of the way, it's easy to drop down and I start coming into a classic finish. We'll do it again, be on this side. So I'm here, right, we're like this, I'm doing different threats. I see the opening, you have to read the situation to make sure it's open. If he's too shielded, I might need to do something else, right? But I see it's open, I threaten, and I land here. I catch the lapel or the sleeve, now he tries to frame. I stay high, push through, and finish the pass. So another really common situation is as we approach the guard, instead of him being facing this way or centered, he's turned a little bit to the other side. So what I'm gonna do is I grab this foot and I'm gonna step in and start trapping this. This usually will cause him to grab my ankle or my pant leg on this side here, and this is commonly just called De La Hiva guard. So even if he has the hook in, I'll just push it out and I have this position. From here, very often your opponent will be looking for your collar. So what I wanna do is as he gets this, I'm gonna cup his knee with my hand and I try to pull this leg through. I don't want it to be able to, to bump me under the butt here, right? So I pull it through. Here he'll often get very stuck, and now as he pulls on the collar, it's very easy for me to pull myself through on the cut. And what I wanna focus on, again, is getting the shoulder blades flat, right? If his shoulders are on the side here, like this, it's gonna be hard to cut, even if I shoot my knee through good. But when he pulls, that's pulling me to impact the shoulders to pull. And you see I land with the shoulder here, flattening his shoulder blades, and now I can dig through, slowly break the grip, and come into a different finish. 
Another common situation is I'll shoot in on the cut here and then my opponent starts to grab like a single leg grip here. Once they grab this single leg grip, it's a little bit different to pass because if I grab the sleeve to try to finish and I drive, he can bump me if he holds my sleeve back. Yeah, like this. Then I get bumped and I can lose my balance. So instead what I do is once I get here, I'm gonna grab his sleeve but I don't pass. I step my left foot high, I'll use my right hand on the low back here and I start backing him up to center him. Once I center him, I'm gonna go really deep with my fingers behind the collar here and I just get my forearm on the face or the neck here and I turn his head away first. Once I turn the head away, now he can't bump that way because his body's turned the other side. I post my hand, I keep my weight on the face here, can drive through. So another cool way to get to it is when your opponent's setting up. So sometimes we're grip fighting here, his hands are moving and I'm gonna shoot for a quick underhook like this. I'm doing it on the other side. So I'm just shooting in here. Now we'll be back on this side. Right, so as I'm moving, I'm gonna shoot this underhook and I try to pull him to me as I'm gonna shoot my knee right through this gap here, right? So what'll happen is I like to tap his hands up a little first and then I shoot through and catch that underhook. Again, I pull in here, he's probably gonna start to turn into me a bit and then I'm gonna use my chest to try to flatten him down here and finish the pass. One more time, we're here, All right? We're like this, boom, boom, shoot the underhook and catch. Now I can come in. It's very hard for him to turn into this because of this arm frame allows me to flatten him down to the floor. I could grab the arm and finish here. So another setup that's a little more simple than the quick underhook is just grabbing a lapel. When your opponent's sitting up, as you get close, they'll often fall to their back to set up some kind of open guard. So what I do is I get the lapel and now I drive in and as he starts to fall back, I'm gonna pull this really tight and it kind of locks him in this in-between position where he's stuck half sitting up and his legs are hard to move. That's the perfect time to cut. So we'll be here, I'm moving, I get this, I push back and I pull. Now I drop my shin on that thigh and now he's almost always gonna frame me. I grab here, slide through and again, focusing on pinning the shoulder blades to the mat as I finish. So I give you guys a lot of specific details for different variations, but the main mechanic that's always gonna need to exist in these is you're always gonna need to get those shoulder blades flat to finish the pass. So here, so what I do is I just hold the lapel. If this foot's up, I wanna pummel this and I wanna get a grip on the inside of his shin here. When I'm, if I go right on top, he can often put the foot back in the bicep. When I get on the inside with this kind of C grip, now there's no way for his foot to come back to my bicep. From here, I'm slowly gonna grind in and get my weight over his chest. And that often will make it easy to get rid of this heel by kind of lifting my elbow up. From here, I get this nice little gap. I'm gonna shoot my right knee directly to the floor and I maintain my chest over top here. And now I'm in a really nice finish position. So one more time, we're here, right? I come in, maybe he gets the lasso. I circle to this side, pressure until I can get rid of this, shoot the knee through and again, landing over top. Remember, if you ever land really far out, even though it looks like a good position, when he pushes me, he's gonna start sliding away. I always have to get over top of him to finish the pass. All right guys, so now I'm gonna include some sparring footage demonstrating most of these techniques being used in action. But if you guys haven't checked it out yet, be sure to check out my website. It's www.johnthomasbjj.com. I'll put the link in the description. I have a lot more organized content on there as well. Sometimes on YouTube, it's harder to keep things as organized. So on the website, I can be a little bit more particular in how I put things together. And as always guys, if you like the content, be sure to like, share, subscribe. Thanks a lot.